Greetings, it's the New York Thrifter here, and today I'm gonna to be shooting a video which shows you what $100 will buy you if you shop at the New York Goodwill Outlet or the bins in Queens. At the bins, you will buy clothing and other items by the pound. So for example, if you buy under 49 pounds of clothes, you pay $1.79 per pound. Anything above 50 pounds, you pay $1.59 per pound. And then anything accessories, that includes hard goods, shoes, handbags, or anything else that they sell, books and things of that nature, you will pay $1.89 for under 49 pounds. And for 50 plus pounds, you pay $1.69. I was not able to spend $100 of the bins in just one trip. I had to take two trips into Queens. It's about 45 minutes to an hour each time I do this, fighting New York City traffic the entire way there and the entire way back. And also, the bins is a little less hospitable than it would be if you were thrifting at a regular thrift store. Oftentimes, you'll go in a regular thrift store and it's not very busy and you get everything's hung up and you you walk through, you know all the prices, you can really take your time. At the bins, it's a bit of a free-for-all. Um, they bring out the bins and everybody kind of jumps on them and just grabs up as much as they can. And so my strategy while I'm there is I go to bins that nobody is at. I go through them uh, slowly and methodically. I put whatever I want in my cart, go through it later. But I definitely don't jump into the fray. Um, it's just that's very stressful and that's not really what I'm I'm there for. I'm there to because I really enjoy uh, thrifting and I really enjoy the thrill of the hunt. And so I find that I do that a lot better when I'm not uh, jammed up against a bunch of other people. So with that introduction, we're going to get started on the haul video. I'm going to show you what cost $100 at the New York bins. And this first pile is a personal pile. I got a few outfits for my little guy. So he got uh, a couple of these. I got a shirt, which is just a Target shirt, and then a Lucky Brand shirt for me. And then I also got this Reformation tote. They um, don't have a great resale value online, but I love Reformation, so I grabbed it. And then I also grabbed this mesh bag. And the reason I did that is Chrissy from Reseller Revolution, I will link her channel below. She has a video that just came out about how to wash silk at home. And she recommends using a mesh bag when you pop your silk items into your washing machine. And so I thought that I would give that a whirl. I'll let you know on how well that comes out for me. And so this is just a few pounds of personal items that I purchased. The rest of what I'm going to be showing you is what I purchased for resale. So up first, let's go through all of the bottoms that I got. So here is a pair of jeans, and I'm not sure if you're going to recognize the M on the back of these jeans, but this is Mother Denim, a size 27, and it lists insider ankle as being the style of jeans. And if you look at them, you're going to notice that it's a bit of a boot cut. It's definitely not a skinny jean. Now, when I looked these up online, they're going for between 50 and $70 because they are a 27, which is, which is a good size. That definitely is going to help in the selling. Here is that. Now, the reason I don't think anybody grabbed these, uh, before me was if you look where you normally will see the brand of jean, it's usually on this back of the jean, they have theirs on the other side. So what I'm thinking is people probably just missed knowing that this was a really high end designer jean. Next up, I got a pair of white. Yes, I live dangerously and I got white jeans from the bins. These are J brand. They are a skinny leg, as you can see here. I love selling jeans. I love listing them because it says right on the tag generally what kind of jean you have. So it makes uh, listing very easy. Now, these are not a great size. These are a size 24, which is teensy, teensy tiny. But obviously there are absolutely people that are size 24 out there. I gave these a really good look. I couldn't find any stains or any wear on them. So I decided to pick them up. 
I will be throwing them through the wash to get them uh, nice and bright before I list them. I actually throw everything that I purchase for resale through the wash. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you for these, for the white jeans, it looks like they could sell between $25 and $40 online. And because those are such a small cut, I'm probably looking closer to the $25 or $30 range. Next, we have a rag and bone jean size 25. Again, a very, very small size. This is the Dre cut. And as you can see, that is rather skinny. Now, I think the reason these weren't picked up is because there is excessive distressing or not even distressing, distressing, I would call this destroyed at the knees. And I'm thinking somebody probably, if they saw that, thought there was something wrong with these. And while their holes are a bit bigger than you would get when you were first buying them, this absolutely goes along with the style of this jean. And so I would say probably um, maybe $30 for these, maybe 20 if I wanted to sell them very quickly. Next up, we're going to be going through the tops that I purchased. And this first one is probably my favorite. It is a Comme de Garçon shirt. I probably did not pronounce that correctly. Now, at first, I thought this was a woman's shirt because it had this ruffle. It's also, it has a duochrome, which is uh, brown and kind of a turquoise blue. But it is a size medium, and after looking at the dimensions on it, I would say it's definitely a gentleman's shirt, uh, just because a size medium for women's would be much, much smaller. This next shirt is very sparkly. It's also really heavy. These are real glass beads, and it is beaded pretty much the entire uh length of the shirt and around and onto the back and this is a sass and bide so let me turn this around to show you the label there it is sass and bide now this is a pretty expensive brand to purchase at a retail outlet uh, but online it doesn't sell tremendously well I would say for this, I'm probably going to get around maybe $25 would be really good. And I'm going to have to watch the shipping because this is definitely more than a pound with all of those beads on it. I wasn't super familiar with this brand when I picked it up. Let me show you. It is Rocco Barocco apparently made in Italy. And whenever you see a holographic image on a tag, that is to authenticate that the item is actually real. So you're going to see these on, I, I know Diane Van Furstenberg, I've seen them on, I've seen them on um, Cavalli uh, dresses where they'll have that that holographic mark. And so I figured uh, this is probably worth a little bit of money. It is a off the shoulder one sleeve uh, top and it's got lots of flowers on it. It's a tunic length. And when I was looking it up, this is not super popular for resale. I found that uh, it probably only goes between $15 and $20. But you know, that's okay. It's a really easy pickup, really easy listing. This next one is an anthropology brand. And this is Odile. It's a size eight, which is a good size silk and cotton tank top. And it was a very inexpensive tank. And so I got it. It's very plain. A lot of other resellers would probably say that they wouldn't have got it just because it is so plain. But I figured, again, I can send it into swap.com, get a few dollars for it. Really, really easy flip. You do that enough times, you know, $5 here, $5 there, without having to list anything, just sending it in to a secondhand consignment. And that money really can add up. I get... Uh, more than a couple hundred dollars a month in in my consignment from swap.com when i do send in a thread up uh, i can easily add another couple hundred to that and then also the real real and so when you take all of those things together it can be upwards of 800 or a thousand dollars that i'm making a month just buying these these items and sending them in so that is definitely an option for resellers out there 
Now, I normally never, never buy t-shirts. I don't particularly like listing them. And people are often really hard on their tea. So you're going to find sweat stains and other marks. And you can actually see on this Ramones tea that it does have a little bit of uh, ickies that I'm going to have to get off with probably just a sweater shaver. But this is a chaser collection. And a lot of uh, resellers swear by this brand. They, you know, they can get a $30 easy flip from a Chaser T. Now, this is a Ramones, and it does have a dolman sleeve, which means the sleeve is very wide. So it kind of hangs down under your arm, and then it's a little bit tighter for the opening. And so... Hopefully I'll get $30 for it. That would be absolutely great. If I got 20, that would be okay too. Another very heavily beaded piece. It is a Foley and Karina. Now I know this brand because they have great uh, bags and I believe they've actually moved into the vegan leather market for, for purses. Uh, they uh, sell their purses for a couple hundred dollars. The resale is oftentimes very good for it, but they also have clothing. And this is a very heavily beaded tunic length top with very wide sleeves with sequence. I checked the sequence over very carefully. I didn't see any flaws with it. It's one thing you have to do when something is detailed like this. Uh, probably online, I could get about $25 for this. But again, it is very heavy. So I'm going to have to watch my weight when I'm shipping that. This piece is called Life After Denim. And it is a size small red and gray plaid. This is an expensive brand when you purchase it retail. It's about a $135 shirt originally. It's a pretty popular brand with like, you know, Zac Efron will wear these. Um, however, the resale value is terrible. We're talking like maybe $8 or $10. So when I looked this up very quickly when I was at the bins, I saw what the original retail price was and I grabbed it. And now looking at it, this is just another piece that's going to go into swap.com because it did not retain its value. But this brand does better. This is Rebecca Taylor. And I really like this brand. It sells quickly for me on Poshmark, not as much on eBay. It is a size small. And it is a cardigan with pom poms on the bottom with a little bit of metallic threading there. And Rebecca Taylor, like I said, on Poshmark, it seems to have quite a bit of a following. So that's definitely where I'm gonna be uh, listing it for the most, probably at about, list it for maybe 35 or 40, and then take a best offer, hopefully around 30 or somewhere in there. And now we are coming up to the end of winter, transitioning into spring. Uh, it's definitely still cold in a lot of parts of the country. It actually, we just had a snowstorm come through last night here where I live. Uh, but, you know, people are still going to be looking for them. There's still a couple months worth of sweater, sweater weather. And so hopefully if I get it listed quickly, I'll be able to get a return on that. This is a Daughters of the Liberation large jacket, and it is a tribal print, which is very hot. Tribal is very boho chic. It's very millennial. It's very going to, uh, you know, an outdoor concert and wanting to look, you know, great for your friends and your Instagram posts. Uh, Daughters of the Liberation is sold at Anthropology, And so that's really great. I know a lot of people are kind of staying a little bit away from Anthropology, but it's still doing really well for me. So for this particular piece, it is actually called the Poetry of Trees Jacket. And I just uh, typed into Google Daughters of the Liberation Tribal Print Jacket, and I was able to find uh, photos and a name for it pretty easily. And I can probably list this for about $50 and sell it anywhere, uh, you know, around probably hopefully 40 And hopefully it sells on Poshmark because the buyer pays for shipping on Posh. So that would work out well for me. 
Now, I did pick up a few athleisure or exercise pieces. And the workout wear for me tends to do rather well, but only certain brands. And if you want to see a video on, you know, athletic wear and what is selling for me, uh, leave me a comment below and I'll, I'll see about putting together a video for you. Um, but first up, I do have this Athleta piece. Athleta does okay for me. Usually the leggings and the uh, the hoodies do the best. Now this is a size extra large, and so this is my size. I'm probably going to end up keeping this. And um, but if you did want to sell it, Athleta comes with a style number. I'm not sure if you can see it there. But with the style number, I looked it up, I was able to find the name of it. And this only goes for about, you know, maybe 10 or $12. And so that's why I'm probably going to keep it because I can definitely use it. Now, next up, everyone is going to recognize this. That is a Lulu lemon tag. And these are just uh, well used shorts. And these will probably sell for around $15 online. They are a size four. And I know that because in the waistline, I just pull down the little pocket and it's got the size dot right there. Uh, you will oftentimes not find a, another tag in the Lululemon because there are tear tags. So you rip those out after you buy them. And the rest of these are just... Nike, I've got a pair of women's shorts, a pair of men's shorts, and then these are just some dry fit leggings in size small and just regular black zippers on the bottom there. Now with my Nike, I find that it doesn't have a great resale value for me because it the market is just so saturated. There is so much Nike out there that people are selling these for just a few dollars, if not less. And so what I do is I send all of my Nike into swap.com. Usually I get a return of about four to five dollars a piece on them. And when I'm spending 80 cents to a dollar on one of these pieces and uh, that really works for me. To send that into an online consignment. The last of the clothing pieces that I purchased are going to be dresses. And first up, you're going to notice this is a casual maxi dress. It goes all the way down to the wearer's ankles. It has got tie dye on the bottom. This is a Gypsy 05 brand size small. And the retail value for these are about, uh, you know, a little over $100. The resale is around 30. This one's a little bit used. Um, it's just, I don't want to say faded, but it's definitely been worn. It's in good use condition, not excellent use condition. So probably about $20 for this would be a really good flip for me. Next up is Broadway and Broom. And you've probably heard of this before because it's a brand that they sell at Madewell, which is associated with J. Crew, And the tag is a little bit faded there. It is a size four. Now it's color blocked. It's got a blue on the top and the, the bodice. And then it goes into a midi length skirt. And this is called micro pleating. So it's got the micro pleating and the midi length means it goes about down to the wearer's calves. And so for something like this, I would probably say around maybe 20 or $25. Next up is a dress with some bright uh, pink flowers on it with brown in the background. It is 100% silk and it is mage. Now this is a very high-end brand with dresses selling for hundreds of dollars. If this was in very good condition, I would say it would probably sell for around maybe 40 or $50. However, when I looked it over, I noticed it had a little bit of, of uh, detachment here, little threads showing at both of the underarms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of manicure scissors, the little tiny, tiny scissors, and I'm going to do a little bit of surgery there and get that cleaned up the best that I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to list it 
take photographs of them cleaned up and just make sure that I disclose in the listing that this dress does have a little bit of loose threads right there. Um, somebody's hopefully not going to mind. They're either going to wear it with maybe a little cardigan or uh, a little jacket or else, you know, when your arms are down, you're not going to see it. So probably hopefully maybe $20 for that. Here is a piece. I find this brand all the time here in this city and it is Koss. And this is just a simple uh, dress. It's got a satin at the top with a uh, tighter uh, bottom. This is definitely something that you'd be able to wear to work, maybe under a blazer. And for this brand, I have been able to sell certain dresses. They have um, cocoon dresses that are knit dresses that do really well at like $50 and $60. For this type, I would say probably about $30. And the cost is really known for kind of their minimalist looks. They've got uh, the more muted colors and uh, they don't really uh, jump out at you. Now, not like this one. This one absolutely jumps out at you. You've got an orange sash a bright pink skirt, and a uh, mustard yellow bodice. And this, of course, is a Maeve dress. I've sold this dress before by Maeve. Um, I like that it's a size 10. That's definitely a larger size for anthropology. They will usually go up to uh, extra large or I, I want to say 16, but you don't often find that when you're thrifting. You oftentimes, at least I find, much, much smaller sizes. So I love finding a size 10. Now to find the name of this anthropology dress, what I did is I uh, googled anthropology Mave color block pink, orange, yellow. And what came up for me is this is called the Parading Hues A-Line color block dress. And uh, it potentially could go for about $50 because of the size, but in smaller sizes, it goes for about 30 now, this next up is another one that I'm going to be washing and trying on because I might end up keeping it. It is a Shoshana dress and it's a size 12. So fingers crossed that that will actually fit me. And it is absolutely beautiful. It is a, a very deep navy and it has kind of illusion lace. Oh, and I just, you know what? I just noticed that this is a flaw. So probably what I'll be doing is that's going to be a pretty easy fix for me. I'll probably grab my um, needle and thread and maybe put a few stitches in, which means I'm probably going to end up keeping this now because um, I can definitely fix it and disclose. But hey, now that I saw that, I guess it's mine. So Shoshana dresses sell for a lot of money, but uh, they don't do as well on the resale market. I would say if I was going to sell this in good condition, um, maybe $20 or $25. Now, it is a size 12, which is a larger size, so that's great. I was able to find the name of this. It is the Leave Weave Eyelet uh, Monica dress, and I could only find this dress selling online in a white or cream color, nothing in the blue. So because it is a rare color, that would have probably fetched a better price in resale if it was uh, all put together. Next up, we have a theory dress, and let me show you the tag. You should probably know the tag by now. This is a size six wool blend, kind of um, jumper style. And it's got buttons down the front. All of the buttons are there, I checked. It's got a tie that comes around the back and actually ends up tying in the front. And I looked this up and it turns out this is called the Kanatari uh, dress. And it is selling online for about uh, 12 at the lowest, 30 at the highest. But if you look, it's actually, there's a couple listed right now for like $100. So I don't know where the people got that number from. I mean, if you can get that, that's great. But I just don't really think it's going to command that much money. Up next is another brand that some resellers shy away from, and that is BCBG Max Azria. 
These are uh, very expensive dresses in retail uh, going for several hundred dollars. They are a bit saturated in the reseller market. And so usually you can sell a dress between 20 or $30. I know some people that sit on this brand and they say that they really can't move it. So they've stopped purchasing it. I still buy it. I actually just sold a BCB dress, I want to say for about $50. And so it was, it just right buyer, right time, right size. This is a size eight, which is really great. And it is just a black uh cocktail dress and it's short it's got a little bit of that uh, crinoline here at the bottom uh, just a really great dress it is uh, strapless and so it's definitely perfect for you know a night out on the town or something special now this we've seen this brand before in this haul and it is oh, I'm not gonna be able to find it here we go Foley and Karina, another one. This is a size large. And when I typed in to Google, um, you know, animal print with the name brand, I was actually able to find the name of this. It is called the Burnout Leopard Drape Dress. And the reason it's called a drape dress is the in the back, you can see it's got a drape. It is actually backless and it drapes all the way down and it's really beautiful on I found some stock photos of it and I really liked it it looks like it's probably would be selling for around 30 to 35 dollars I'm probably getting end up uh, sending it into like a thread up and getting you know 12 or 15 for it um, they'll list it they'll sell it just because I don't I don't really want to um, you know bother with it if I don't have to if I did end up selling it for, you know, $25 or $30. Um, I'd have to photograph it, I'd have to ship it. And with fees, it's much less than that. So if I can get 15 from ThreadUp, I will definitely take that. Here is a geometric print, black and white. And if you look at this tag, it's anthropology, and it actually says, made by anthropology. And because the tag was like this, I knew it was a little bit of a newer piece. Because Lately, I want to say maybe in the last year or two years, Anthropology has been printing by Anthropology on a lot of their uh, brands that they sell in house, especially the ones they sell exclusively in house. Now, this is a size medium dress. It has a mock neck to it, which just means that it's it's not a turtleneck, but it's definitely a higher neck, and it's not tight at all. It goes probably to the wearer's knee. And this dress, I was able to Google uh, Maeve by Anthropology, geometric, mock neck, black and white. And I was able to find the name. This is called the Cleary mock neck dress. And so I was able to find that online. Now, before in some of my videos, I talked about whether or not I would use stock photos for a lot of the pieces. And I, it's, it's definitely a use at your own risk. If you use a stock photo for this, then um, you can be penalized for it. Uh, your listing could be taken down if there's a complaint about it uh, because it is not your photo. You do not own the copyright. And if you get enough of those infractions, you could be um, limited or even banned from certain online uh, reselling outlets. So uh, for instance, uh, eBay, I've had some of my Lululemon pieces uh, taken down. And I think I had a Victoria's Secret piece as well. And so I stopped using uh, stock photos on eBay altogether just because I don't want to have my privileges revoked. But on Poshmark, I will admit, I do go for the stock photos. I know that it is not completely kosher, but at the same time, it sells a lot better. So you kind of just have to weigh the pros and the cons and what you want to do. And so that's why I'm telling you how I'm Googling these to find the stock photos. Also, if you have the name for the piece, even if you're not using the stock photo, a lot of times you can ask for a little bit more money and you could be found a little bit better because there are people out there that know exactly what they want and exactly what it's called. And they're going to be able to find it. Uh, by using the name that, that you're using in your listing. Next up is a 
Edith A. Miller. It looks like this should be a uh, vintage tag. It is not. This is a modern day company. This is a very tight metallic striped dress. Uh, this dress, when it was new, cost about $130. They don't have a huge following, but you will find pictures of online of like Miranda Kerr wearing um, some of the pieces. And so, you know, that's that's always nice to know that, that celebrities are wearing these. For this particular piece, I'm seeing it sold for around $20 or $25. This is probably one of my favorite pieces that I was able to pick up. This is a Mason Scotch. And I really like this brand. Uh, it's just a, a really well-made uh, brand, very much to my style, very kind of uh, plain, if you will, but also just really great cuts. This has got pockets in it. It's got uh, a different type of knit fabric from the bottom, which is a little more polyester. It does have long sleeves so that could be good for spring even though it is a darker color this brand used to sell a lot better online um, I would say back in the day I could get you know 60 or 70 dollars if not more now this would probably go for something closer to 20 or 30 which is still great not as great as it once was but you know the times the times change and you move along with it this is Frock by Tracy Reese. Tracy Reese is a great uh, designer and that has been around for a while. Frock is the diffusion brand, so they definitely don't sell at as high prices, but still really, really super cute dresses. This one has a velvet burnout top, or actually goes all the way through, and it does cinch there at the waist. And I would say for a Tracy Reese frock, you could probably get uh, maybe about $20, maybe a little less depending on the size and style. She does have some really great pieces that are very bright and those can do, I, I feel like those do a little bit better in reselling. They kind of get the, the buyer's eye a little bit more. Now I have two pieces by this brand and I'm going to butcher the name horribly. It is Shakua Chi. And this one is a size six. It is a Swiss dot. And those are just the dots that are actually Im embossed right into you can see they're raised right into it. This can be an off the shoulder top if you wanted, or you could put it on the shoulder. And um, it does have the longer sleeves. The other piece that I have is a little more boho chic. It's a brighter color, size six, so probably the same person. And this is more of just a long length uh, dress. It does have a built-in belt here that you can hear. And for both of these, if I was to sell them online, I would probably say around maybe $20, $25. Um, they, they do better... Um, on Poshmark because it is a bit of a, a younger a younger brand, um, but I'm probably going to send those into ThreadUp and take my you know fifteen dollars for each of them, so that's a thirty dollar profit right there, minus cost of goods. And one of the best for last, this is a Copels dress, and I spoke about Copels in my last. Uh, video. I love the brand. It does really, really well. Uh, the resale value stays pretty good. Um, I would say probably about maybe 50 or $60, even though it was a couple hundred when it was first sold. This is an extra large. It is size 42. You don't often find extra large and more designer pieces. So that's really nice. Um, because it is so um, because of the fabric and because it is so wrinkled, I am going to be taking this in to get it dry cleaned and making it look really nice. I'm probably going to end up sending it to the real reel and uh, letting them sell it after trying it on first because it is my size. And for the final pieces in this haul, I have two bags. One is, let's see the 
bought Kier, apparently, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I was able to Google this brand and I looked this up. This piece is called the trigger bag and because of its size which is a little bit smaller probably sells for about $25 um, and it's got kind of a blue pop of blue and it's like metallic uh, color it's in very good condition and so hopefully I'll get the full 25 for it I also have this messenger bag and this is Lacoste you'll probably recognize the alligator I like this because it is going to be unisex. Men and women would definitely be able to, to tote this Lacoste around. It is in great condition. I tried giving it to my husband and he said he already has a messenger bag. So he handed it back to me. So it looks like somebody else is going to be getting it. Hopefully paying between $25 and $30. Now... Shoes at my bins are rather competitive. A lot of the resellers hang around the shoe section um, and that's what they focus on. But I was able to find two pair. These are the last two items in this haul. And both of these pieces have things wrong with them, but because of their brand name, I decided to get them anyway. So we're gonna start off with these. These are Clo which is a designer brand, and they are called the Penny Loafer Wedges. And the reason they have the name Penny Loafer is right here. You can see they've got a little coin right in there that came with the shoe. Now, I believe the reason that, that no other resellers had grabbed these were because they have a little bit of discoloration. So right here, it's discolored. And then also on some of the seaming, you have some discoloration. So I believe somebody picked them up and looked at them and decided that they didn't want to take the chance on them and they put them back. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to clean them up a little bit, but I'm not going to go crazy with it. I am going to see, I don't think I want to use like a bleach pen just because this isn't pure white. It is an off white on the canvas, but I'm going to get maybe a little stain stick and scrub it and see if I can clean it up a little bit. Um, as you can see, the bottoms are actually re in really good shape. The cork is actually also in really good shape. It's just the discoloration on the canvas. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time with it, see what I can do. Um, if I am able to, you know, uh, get them get them together, hopefully I'll be able to sell them for maybe $50 or $60. There was a recent pair that sold on Poshmark that had no problems with them. They were in good shape for $110. And so just so if you know, if you ever find the clothes shoes or bags or clothes, definitely worth it. This next pair, these are booties from Vince. You can see that. It's a name that a lot of resellers know. And I believe this is what they call, I want to say a sock booty, just because uh, the upper part is, it's almost like a sock when you wear it. It is very tight on your leg. And these are in a bit of an unusual color because it's almost a deep red with some brown in it and so it's it's a very unusual color now I really liked I was drawn to it obviously because of the Vince name I know that these are selling uh you know without any problems uh they can be sold for upwards of $170 online and so I looked at the problems that they had and I decided to take a chance and even if I sold them for $50 I'd be making a great profit so first of all if you look on the back, you are able to see there's a little bit of separation here uh, on the back, like almost a hole. And then there is actually a hole on this one. And so here, if you pull it apart, I believe I can take that and get that stitched up at maybe a local uh, cobbler. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I'm seeing is that the paint on the bottom is flaking off in certain places. This one's not so bad, but on the bottom of this one, you can actually see it flake off. So what I'm gonna be doing there is I'm gonna be taking my sander, I've got a little sanding block, very fine grit, and I'm gonna be sanding a little bit of this off and just cleaning that up. 
And as I said before, hopefully if I get these cleaned up, I could be looking at uh, maybe $50 at disclosing everything that I did to them so the buyer is absolutely aware of what they're getting. And so that is the last piece. Uh, I did a quick count. I believe I have just under 40 pieces or, or 39 pieces uh, to sell, to resell online. So that means I paid, if you wanted to do averages, uh, under $2.50 per piece. Obviously, some were heavier than others, but I just averaged it out. Um, this haul that I got at the bins, the Goodwill outlet, is about double what I got from the regular uh, goodwill or regular thrifting. And so I got double the, the amount of pieces. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's double the profit, however, um, just because whereas at the goodwills that I shop at in the metro New York area, oftentimes I'll be able to pick up pieces that can sell for quite a bit of money. Whereas, uh, you know, with like the Zara skirt that you saw it only goes for, you know, let's say $8. And $8 for the flannel that I picked up. And so some of the pieces were definitely better than others. But uh, if you do have the patience and the time, the bins can be a great strategy for you to thrift at if you wanted to do some reselling online. So with that, I'm going to sign off and I will be talking to everyone soon. Bye-bye.